So now we're in English units here. So it's an eight foot wide path, two foot minimum graded area to the side, non-paved. It could be paved, but, you, but the main thing is you need two feet to any vertical obstruction. So that way a bicyclist isn't encouraged to hook their handlebars or, or crash on a pole, fall into a hole, etc. Now it can have a 2% cross slope, but both of the shoulders have to, both of the, of the side regions need to slope away so the drainage is good, okay? Because what happens when you have a path that's next to a hillside that has a slope on the uh, graded area to the path, like so? It's full of mud all the time. Every time it rains, it becomes a mud wall, right? So you need a way to get the water off of it. Here's a cross section of a path along the highway. Notice here's the highway, here's the edge of the pavement, five foot unpaved area, same two foot slope away region for drainage. It can have a 2% cross slope, eight feet wide, another 2% sloping region. Part of why this is here is to make sure that path users, especially young children, don't stray into the highway. Now I realize a hardcore mountain biker decides he wants to transition to the highway, is gonna do it, okay? But a three-year-old who's with mommy is probably not gonna get off the paved path on the tricycle because they're probably not gonna do too well on dirt on a trike, right? So there's, there's some safety reasons for wanting to have a buffer like that. Maggie, was there anything you wanted to add yes. about this cross-section? Yes. The two most, uh, two of the common mistakes that are made when designing bike paths that are close to the road is that they don't understand that the separation is measured from the edge of roadway pavement to the edge of the bicycle that all has to be unpaved. Um, and the, you can see that the pavement of the bike path slopes at 2% for drainage. Both adjacent unpaved areas, I'm going to loosely refer to them as shoulders, those should also be at 2%. Uh, part of the reason for that area is not only clearance from obstructions, but also kind of a recovery area if you should go off the pavement, you don't want the bicyclist to crash. Uh, so don't, you, know, you don't want to have like the steep cross slope. Uh, bike path minimums are very narrow to begin with. I think they're a little too narrow. I think you should probably follow the Ashto guidance, which is about 10 feet. I, they I, really don't provide for really good passing opportunities. So okay. anyway, the, the, this, it isn't really mentioned in the test, text that the cross slope of this paved area should be 2%. By the way, and I so I'm planning to include that in the design manual to make it more explicit. One thing I want to point out is that a lot of river paths have an 8 foot wide paved area and then a 45 degree slope down to the river channel. Right. And then that doesn't include a recovery zone. Both of those, those, shoulders, now, both now. those shoulders should slope away from the path. Right. That's what I, I was showing I've them previously. I've seen a number of ETA applications where the designer showed the entire cross section sloping in one right. direction so that one of the shoulders so grade was crossed by the path. That's not good at the deposit material on the path. It's just going to make maintenance that much harder. Right. You're not going to get funded if you submit designs like that. Right. So the point I was trying to get at, Maggie, is a lot of river paths don't follow this standard. That was the point. And that some cities put up railings, but now railings have their own problems because if you don't have a two-foot exclusion zone before the railing, a lot of bicyclists can run into the chain link fence or the railing. So they're problematic, and they actually don't meet this standard, even though they are fairly common in LA County. District the other, 7. The other question that comes up a lot is, what should the structural section look like? Um, the highway design manual has very bare minimum for the pavement. And some people think you don't have to, you, you, that there are no standards because it's not in Chapter 1000. But you do have to design it for the expected traffic. You're always going to have maintenance vehicles using these paths. 